Hey everybody, Matt Clark here and welcome to this live webinar. I'm here in uh, Austin, Texas. It's Thursday, March 10th at about noon here. Um, so welcome to this webinar. This is going to be an amazing webinar. We, as you could guess, are already uh, over a thousand people, which is the maximum uh, go to webinar allows. So congratulations on making it in and double congratulations to all those people who showed up super early. I think 20 minutes before we already had six, 700 people on here. Uh, so, so great job. So you all made it on here live. If any issue happens, if there's any audio issues, if there's uh, you happen to get kicked off, um, any of that sort of stuff, we do plan to have a replay. Sometimes we, you know, are sort of iffy about the replay, whether we're going to do one, whether we're going to have one. Um, but we definitely plan to have one on this. We've got three people recording it, so the replay should be no issue. And also, the replay is typically better quality uh, than the um, uh, live webinar sometimes anyway. So, so don't worry about that. So if you miss part of it or if you want to hear it again, uh, there will definitely uh, be a replay that we're going to post. And um, you know, my go-to webinar panel is acting a little buggy, but I'll try to send the link for the replay. But worst case, just check your email, or if you're an ASM member, check the ASM Facebook group, and we'll definitely meant, uh, make sure to have the replay in there. So first off, I get a few people uh, are, are telling me that um, the sound may be a little choppy. Um, I don't know if that's that's for everybody, but it seems like other people don't really have that many issues, so it seems to be good. Yeah, so Paul is saying sound is good. Uh, Brian's sound is clear. Everyone else is fine. So if you're having audio issues, it's likely on your end. And you know, if you've been on a webinar, I feel like we've said this a million times. But we'll say it once again because not everyone has been on very many webinars. Uh, you know, it's a it's, it takes up a lot of bandwidth. So if um, you have other things going on on your computer, uh, shut all that stuff off. Um, Skype, um, any downloading, uploading, any of that sort of stuff definitely will will eat up a lot of bandwidth and cause worse sound. But worst case, um, we will upload the video um, and have it available on a replay page as quickly as we possibly can, hopefully within two hours of the webinar being over. Uh, so you'll be able to check it out there. It won't have that issue. Um, so that's that's really it on that stuff. So yeah, congratulations on making it, making it here. We're not going to waste a whole lot of time because we're not waiting for people to get on because nobody else can get on right now. Um, so you all are definitely in a great spot. So what I would like to know, which may or may not um, work very well because this go-to webinar is being a little buggy, but what I would like to know is... Um, let me know if you are an ASM member or if not. I'm just sort of curious because we obviously like put this out to a lot of people because it's strictly related to uh, Amazon. Um, and, and so we put this out to all of our ASM members. So it should be a lot of you all. But we also had, you know, a, a little bit of uh, – we posted it to our publicamazing.com page. We po posted it other places. Um, so, so there's probably other people on here that aren't, which is perfectly cool. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be an ASM member. I'm just sort of curious to sort of see where you're at. So – Seen a lot of people, ASM5, 6, 2, 6, 6, yes. Uh, got somebody, uh, who is this? Uh, Amelia says not, so cool, so welcome. Um, so it looks like a, a large majority of people. So here's another person, Domen says not. So I would say it's probably 90% of people here, 95% are probably ASM. So here's another person, Sai Rodriguez says uh, not currently. Cool, so good to know. So welcome everybody for an ASM member. Obviously, welcome back. And if you're not, then uh, welcome. And hopefully, uh, you know, this this may or may not be your first uh, webinar with us. So that's cool. So so welcome and, and, and I hope you have a great time because we have uh, some awesome information here today. I mean, I know you all have seen emails. You all have seen ads. Uh, you know, this person that's going to be presenting on this webinar, which we've kind of done this whole secret person kind of thing, um, kind of for humor. It's not really that big of a deal. He's a great guy. You're going to you're going to really like him uh, and love his content. But he's been very successful with this business. Uh, you know, he's been selling on Amazon for, I guess, three years now. Uh, and he's been extremely successful. He's one of these guys that just sort of month after month, business just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And I actually talk with him at least a few times a week now to ask him questions about this because he is very up to date on a lot of the stuff when it comes to selling on Amazon. He's got multiple brands. Uh, he sources products. He does, he does everything you need to know how to do with this business. And he's an expert at the specific topic you're going to learn about today which is generating traffic and sales using a special Amazon marketing platform that I've heard a few people mention, but most people do not know exist. And the big thing is, is most people have no idea how to use it. I don't want to steal too much of Mike's uh, thunder here, but uh, you're going to learn that when he first started uh, doing stuff on this platform, it didn't work very well. So some people are saying, if I'm already using this thing, uh, do I already know everything I need to know? Uh, do I need to be here? Trust me when I say that you definitely want to pay attention because he is going to show you the right way to do it. You're going to learn how to get traffic, how to get sales, uh, can even help with keyword rankings, and more importantly, learn from somebody who sold millions of dollars of his own products on Amazon 
and has, has used this system to produce a lot more sales. So there's going to be a live Q&A at the end of this webinar. So this is a big benefit for you showing up early and showing up live is there's going to be a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. So you're going to be able to ask him any question. I'm going to help field questions so you can ask him throughout the webinar and we'll get to him at the end. So once again, make sure you turn off everything on your computer so you don't uh, have any sound or video issues. And in the worst case, you can always check out the replay. So really some of the some of the value of learning from this person he's been selling on Amazon since 2013 sales have grown consistently year after year now sells multiple millions of dollars on Amazon uh, in, in a single year. Uh, he sells well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars per month every single month right now. This is not something that, you know, he did a few years ago and now he's, you know, telling people about it. He's doing it right now. He's very active in this business. He's here to teach you stuff because he wants to help, not because. He needs to do it financially for whatsoever reason. I mean, there's nothing here anyways, uh, but he's doing it just because he likes to help people. He's got a very successful business. And uh, some of the cool stuff is like, you know, during the recent holiday season, which, you know, it's March now. So let's say back in December, there were some days knowing what he knows how to do, having the business that he has, that some of his days he sold over $200,000 in a single day during the holiday season. That's the caliber of the person that you're here uh, and we're here with. Uh, loves to help people. He's great at teaching and communicating, which is kind of a unique skill set. There's some people that are really good at business and executing in their own business. Then there's some people who are really good at teaching and communicating, but sometimes it's not the same person. The good thing is, is our special guest is excellent at both. He's a great guy, loves to help people, uh, has an amazing story. Um, so yeah, without me uh, talking anymore, I would like to welcome our special guest. So feel free and uh, take it over. Great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you perfect. Okay, great. And speaking of communication, I have to throw this out there right now that uh, I may not sound like the perfect orator right now because I'm kind of coming off of a, a, a dual case of strep throat and the flu. So if I sound a little nasally, I need to apologize for that. And uh, if I go silent for a few seconds, it's because I'm doing you guys a favor and I'm muting my microphone and coughing so you don't hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that out of the way. Um, I love the picture, by the way, Matt put up there. I know that those of you who know me, absolutely know that that was me right away. I can probably be found most times during the day with a Starbucks in my hand. So that, uh, that was a great choice, Matt. I love it. But let's start talking right away uh, about, first off, you know, who was I? I know Matt introduced a little bit about where I've been the past couple of years, but I also want to make sure you guys know where I'm coming from. And so I like to talk about my previous life, you know, before I became an Amazon seller. And who was I? Uh, so first, I was a manager for a company called Ernst & Young. They're a really large consulting and accounting firm, and that's where I got my first real business, as I like to think about it. I was doing a lot of consulting for a lot of big companies, um, you know, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, Tyco Healthcare, Monsanto, companies like that. Those are the caliber of companies that I work with. So I really got a lot of in-depth views of how these large companies worked, um, and it was an interesting and great experience for me. I absolutely loved it. After that, I actually went and consulted completely on my own for several years, uh, picked up several clients. That was a really great part of my life. Kind of felt like an entrepreneur because I'm working for myself, but you know, I'm doing consulting, so you're working for hours for someone else. And I finally landed a really big client, Charter Communications, who after several years consulting, uh, made me an offer to become a finance director for them. And there's the picture there I like to show there. That's our corporate office. Um, that's over in St. Louis, Missouri. I actually had an office on the top floor there. It was a great corner office. I loved it. Um, great view, but you know what? It was still a job. Even though I loved the people and loved the work I was doing, but I wasn't you know, really doing something on my own. And that's why I like to say that I was a closet entrepreneur for several years. You know, I really had the bug to always do something on my own. And thank goodness, uh, 2013 came along and I joined, you know, what's called ASM. And really, I mean, I, you can't find a more perfect time to say this. The rest is history. It's completely changed my life and my family's life and so many lives around me too. So let's talk about who I am now. And I love that picture. I got to meet Sir Richard Branson last year. Um, at one of the amazing live summits. I love that picture. He's a great guy. And I know a lot of other people got to meet him too, but just that's one of the pinnacles of my of my new career here. Uh, so now I've been a seller, like Matt said, for over three years now, started in 2013. Actually did well enough where we became vendors for Amazon. And that's where they invite you into the program. There's no other way to get into it. Uh, you can't initiate this conversation. They just have to recognize your brand, sales, and growth, and the quality of service you provide to people. And then they invite you into the program. Um, so we've been doing that now for over a year and a half. And also, uh, as Matt also said, you know, I started off as a student. I became a mentor for ASM. I actually was an instructor for a couple times too. Some of you on here, I'm sure, saw some of the videos that I got to do for one of the uh, you know, second and third iteration of ASM. Absolutely loved it. 
and uh, a wannabe comedian with a heavy emphasis on the wannabe part of it. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe someday in another life I'll, I'll complete that task too. And then lastly, but definitely not, you know, least, um, father of two and husband of one. Anyone who knows me knows that I talk about them all the time. They're a huge inspiration for me and a huge inspiration for uh, why I do what I do and, and how I got so actively involved and driven into making this business work. So that talks about who I am, but that doesn't really tell you how I became an expert at this traffic source we're going to talk about today. So there's really three steps to how I got to know so much about it. The first is I was a vendor and I had access to it. And at the time when I became a vendor, that was the only way to become a member of using this traffic source. No one else could get into it. And so I had access to it. And like anyone who gets access to a new traffic source, I got all excited and I started spending lots of money thinking it was going to grow my company. And then I completed the second step to becoming an expert. And that was sucking at it really bad. <laughs> I really stank terribly. It is, I don't think you can see the results on here. But these are some of my results from late 2014 where I was spending money and making either no sales back, uh, making in some cases, you know, maybe only half my money back. And in lots of cases, I was spending more money than I was making in sales. This is an actual screenshot of some of my very early on campaigns. Um, Normally, you know, people don't like to share how bad they start off at something, but for me, this was a really important point in my turning around and becoming an expert at this. So I wanted to, to share this with you guys and tell you that if you're doing poorly with this right now, you're not the only one. Um, that's, you know, the faster you fail, the, the quicker you're able to get up and learn from your mistakes and turn things around. I'm here to tell you that that can happen and has happened for us. And so the third step to becoming an expert for me then uh, was all happened in 2015, the very next year. So we just had our best month ever. So our the Christmas season right before then was awesome. We sold well over $300,000 in one month. So this is over a year ago. We, like many of you who were selling products for the holidays, were restocking. We sold out of so many of our products. So we had that terrible feeling where we're just sitting there waiting for products to come in. You know, you're looking at your account and you know that you just don't have anything to sell. But I need to figure out, well, how can I make use of this time? I know we're going to have another 30, 60 days where the products are fully back in stock. What can I do? And so I decided to dig into this list of what I call my never-ending projects. And I guarantee everyone on this call has a list of projects in this business that you want to get to. They can be, you know, Facebook advertising, Google advertising. They can be product pictures, improving the quality of your listings, researching new products, whatever it is. Everyone has a ton of projects you want to get to, but you never can get to all of them. And I decided I'm going to make use of this time and dig into one of them. And that one that I dug into was this specific traffic source. I really decided to make use of that time and do everything and learn everything I could about it to see, can it be successful for me? And so let me tell you about the results, what happened then. So we doubled our sales from 2014 and 2015. That meant we went from over 1 million in sales in one year to 2 million in another year with just, it's an astonishing amount of growth. I didn't know how big we'd grow that year. To be honest, I didn't know how big we we did grow until we're actually going through our end year in numbers right now. And I saw exactly what we did. And a large part of that, it was due to this new traffic source. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, every single bit of that sale, the doubling was because of this new traffic source. That's not the case. You know, we, we did launch other, other products, absolutely. But this new traffic source absolutely played a huge role in that. And it played a huge role in several different aspects. One was it increased the internal traffic for those products that we were selling as a vendor. Again, this traffic source was designed for vendors, so that's primarily what it was originally used for. So if you're selling a product as a vendor, you can use it to advertise those products. So it definitely increased those sales. But secondly, a lot of people didn't know this, it increased the traffic for all of our products, even those we're selling as FBA. So uh, some people always ask me, you know, Mike, you're a vendor, do you sell all your products as a vendor? No, we don't. We sell a very small percentage. We sell three of our products out of over 20 through the vendor program. And the point I'm trying to make here is that this traffic source, we were able to use increase all of our sales for every product, regardless of whether or not you're selling it through the vendor program or regardless of whether or not you're selling it as a regular FBA seller. That's a, it was a huge eye-opener to me when I realized that we could do that. And then lastly, you know, I'm talking about internal traffic because that's just, let's face it, when people are on Amazon, those are your captive buyers. They are ready and looking for a product. So that's a great way to get highly converting traffic. But there's something else that I noticed here too. We were able to increase our external traffic too for, for all of our other traffic sources like Google, Facebook, Pinterest, wherever you want to get it from. Using the information I got out of this traffic source, we were able to not only 
improve the traffic we got from the other you know external places but really improve the quality and conversions of it because one of the things that people don't realize you can get out of this you can get conversion and demographic data data out of the system which I've never heard from any other source to get from there's nothing else I know of that you can get traffic outside of Amazon send it into Amazon and tell whether or not it converts that was like a mind-blowing realization when I saw that happen and that has helped us grow sales even outside of the system by using the data we got out of it so now I know that everyone wants to know you know what is this traffic source some of you may know it um, but I just want to cover a few more things before I let you know what that is first it is used by some of the biggest companies on Amazon companies like Gillette Pampers Amazon themselves they use this source of traffic to get traffic to their own listings also, it's, it's designed to help brands grow. And when you see it and you start using it, you'll realize that Amazon is on a big push right now. They want to see brands growing on their site. They want to sell more products from more companies. And a big part of that formula is brands introducing more products on their platform. That is one of the ways Amazon is developing and growing themselves. So this entire platform has been designed around that core theory of getting brands to increase their sales. And until recently, like I said, you had to be a vendor in order to use it. However, that's changed now. So what is this traffic source? And I'll kind of like let you know right now. It's called Amazon Marketing Services. And this is a screenshot right here of when you log in and get started on it of what it is. Um, some of you may know of it. Uh, probably very few of you do because Amazon does not really advertise this service very much at all. They don't make it well known that they have it. They don't make it well known how to get into it. Even vendors like me. I never got an email from Amazon when I became a vendor saying, hey, you're a vendor now. Use this traffic source. It's a great system. I had to figure it out all on my own. And even to this date, it's not really well known or advertised. But let me tell you a little bit about Amazon Marketing Service, you know, what it is and what it isn't. So first, it's a self-service platform. So think of it as a Facebook, Google, Bing, Pinterest, where you're in control of creating your own advertisements. There's no other outside source you have to go through to hire to do it. This is not AMG or Amazon Marketing Group, where this is it's this big group. You write them checks for tens of thousands of dollars. Then they go out there and they do whatever magic they do, and you hope and pray you get sales. This is not that. This is your own system that once you have it set up, you log in and you create your own ads. You track their own performance. You adjust the bids. You you optimize everything in there. It's a great system that you have total control over. Again, it's centered around brand growth. And once you get into it, you'll actually see why I'm saying that. Because some of the ads and things set inside of it um, are really designed not just for an individual product. They're designed to get you more sales for your entire brand, which I, I love. I think that the best thing you can do for your business is to grow your brand. And this does just that. Uh, and also, again, having a vendor account used to be a requirement for using AMS. However, that is no longer the case. And so for those of you on this webinar, it's very, very good news for everyone who wants to get involved and get more traffic to their products. So let's talk a little bit about the components of it. Um, some of this you can actually get from, you know, looking at Amazon Marketing Services, but I'm going to go into more detail what you can't get from actually on their site as well. First, there are three types of ads. Um, and just keep in mind that the ads are only one part of this whole platform here. It's, it's a very big part, but it's not everything. And those three types of ads are called sponsored product ads, very similar to what we all use as FBA sellers, um, but they have some twists and some things that I really like if you know how to use them, how to get more, more out of them inside of AMS. Next, there's an ad called the headline search, which is just a phenomenal source of traffic. You get so much traffic, you have to watch it. You have to be careful, control how much you spend because you have top placement on these ads and you have the prime real estate. Um, so you really got to keep an eye on it, but it works fantastic. And then last, the third one is called product display ads. Most people don't know what these are and may not even notice them. Uh, but when you start seeing them, you'll see the, pow the, the power and value of these types of ads. Now, outside of the ads, they have something else called a brand page. Brand pages, I want you to think of this as your very own personal website right inside of Amazon. It's like having your own customized URL where when people visit it, it's your page. And on that page, you can have several things like a, a logo and a add to cart button and even a video. It's an amazing place to have your customers land when you're sending traffic to Amazon. And when you use that page correctly, you get these two following pieces of information, customer demographics and conversion data. And I wrote that again, yes, conversion data, because that is the one thing that so far every single person I've ever talked to selling on Amazon is clamoring to get. They want to know if you're spending money from outside traffic 
how do you know if it's converting? Because Amazon does not tell you that. They simply do not tell you that. Um, we all know that you get rewarded for sending traffic to Amazon from the outside, or at least you should know that by now, but you don't really know which traffic is paying off. When you use brand pages correctly and you send outside traffic, you will get conversion data. And that's just flat and simple. It's amazing. That was another mind-blowing, eye-opening experience when I realized you could do that. So I actually want to start talking about each one of these in a little more detail. I'm going to show you some screenshots so that you'll know what to look for. So first, there's sponsored search ads. And again, these are the AMS version of the Seller Central sponsored search. Uh, they've only been around for a year or so. Um, and the reason is they that these didn't used to exist, um, and it actually hurt vendors because since this was a vendor platform for advertising, vendors were at a disadvantage. We could not do sponsored search ads. You can imagine how frustrating that was. You know, you get invited to the vendor program. You have you have all these other great marketing tools at your disposal, but the most basic and simple of them, having your product show up during a search, having like in the paid search results, couldn't happen. They, you just couldn't do it. Couldn't sell your product instead of FBA Solo Central that way. So. AMS came up with their own version of sponsored search. It's grown over the past year. They continue to improve it, and they've even added in a few other features that are not existing or do not exist inside of the seller central version of it. So let's take a quick look at it. Again, get be a vendor, but let's take a quick look at what it looks like. So we've all seen this. Um, you do a search. I love searching for spatulas. It's still one of my favorite products to search for. But if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see exactly what those sponsored search ads are. No big surprise here. Everyone here has seen them. This simply allows you to do sponsored search inside of AMS. Um, and it's a must if you're a vendor, if you want to get your products visible in front of other customers. Now let's go to the next one. Um, one of my very favorite called product display ads. Now these have the best return on the investment I've seen out of every single type of Amazon advertisement. Uh, whether it's sponsored search, whether it's you know headline search I'm going to get to, these continually get the best ROI and that's because of their placement where you find them at. The placement of these ads is so good that when I showed them to people just last month, they actually thought this was a new type of hijacking. Someone saw this and said, hey, my product is hijacked. Someone is right by the buy box of my product. How do I call Amazon and get them off? And of course, you can imagine, they called Amazon and you know, Amazon actually said, you can't, that's, that's not a hijacking. This is a specific type of ad that we allow and we promote. And if you know how to get the, your ad there, you can do this too. Um, and when you use these ads, there's two things you can target. You can target interests. So, for example, let's use spatulas again. If we're targeting people who actually cook you know, a lot, do a lot of baking, you can target them. Amazon has a great set of demographics you can start targeting. But what I love is you can target specific products. And to make sure you understand exactly what I'm talking about, I have a screenshot here. So let's imagine this is you selling this beautiful Cooperneck saucepan. It's copper, um, no reviews, very expensive, $400. Don't know if I would use that kind of pan. Um, but you know, here is someone has spent time marking their product. You have a customer on their detail page ready to buy this product. If you look over in the right-hand side of the screen by the buy box and then you scroll down, I've circled something in red. That is a product display ad. And imagine how powerful that is. Someone else has spent all the time acquiring this customer, getting them to go all the way down and look at their page and look over and consider buying this product. And then they see another ad for whatever product you are selling. You're targeting this product. I actually put in when I set up my ad, I want to target the Imperatives Kupernik saucepan. And then it'll allow me to put my ad on their detail page right by the buy box an incredibly powerful type of ad you can have access to. One of my favorites to use. Um, you don't get as much traffic as the other ones, but the traffic you get is very, very high converting and very affordable. So I love that, I love that type of ad. So let's talk about the last type of ad too, they're called the headline search ads. Now these get the most traffic, like I said earlier, out of all the other ads. And the reason is you have prime real estate. These show up at the very top of the search results. So some people on here might be saying, well, hey, you know, in Seller Central, they launched something called Bid Plus a few months ago, where your ad gets to show up at the very top also. That's true, they do. But these are so much better for three reasons. One, if you use headline search ads, your ad will only show up at the very top of the ads. You don't have to like guess or wonder or hope that it shows up at the top. You know, sometimes it'll show at the right, maybe it'll show up at the top. You don't have to do that. It, if your ad shows up, it is always at the very top of the search results. Second, you get to customize your ad. So instead of just having your product shown up there, you can actually go out there and customize exactly your sales copy. So imagine choosing the image, choosing how you market that to your customers at the top of the search results. It is very, very powerful, and it makes your ad look 
you know, heads and tails above any other type of normal bid plus ad that might be up there. And then lastly, this ad doesn't just take you to the product that you're advertising. It takes you to a listing of products. Now, at first, I was thrown off by that. I thought, you know, well, I don't really like that. I don't. I want to take customers to the exact product that I want to sell them on. But once I started using these and testing these out, I saw why Amazon does that, not just for brand growth because of conversions also. If you take your customer and you give them a list of products that are just your product, then you know the, they're your products you're selling and you can guide them to the three, four, or five products that you want to sell, that is much more powerful than taking them just to one product and giving them less choice. So let me show you exactly how these are different than bid plus ads. So here we go. Here is someone doing a search for kitchen accessories. And if you look at the top, um, you'll see a company, again, another example of a big brand using Amazon marketing services. This is Stanley Black & Decker. This is a bid plus ad. And look at it, it's showing up at the very top. They have a nice picture. They're showing three of their products. Um, if you look at it, that is not the name of the product. They're using their own ad copy there. Car cleaning made easy. Shop now. And when someone clicks on that ad, it's not going to go to one product. It's going to go to this page three of their products. That's why it's different than Bid Plus. It's going to show whatever products you specifically want your customer to go see. And we've seen this time and time again. Um, this converts very well. Uh, and you know, I didn't do this on purpose, but this is kind of funny. I want you to look at the results here. We have a big company, Black & Decker, Stanley, huge company that you know spends a lot of money in marketing. And they have some great products out there. They're using AMS. They're paying for this advertisement here. And they just sent someone to three of their products they're trying to sell. Look at the reviews on here. First product has one five-star review. Second product has absolutely no reviews at all. Third product has one review and it's a, it's a one-star review. This is your competition on AMS right now. These are the majority of people who are using the advertising platform. They're not using it to their full advantage. They are not as savvy as you might think. If you know what you're doing, you can actually take advantage of these and compete and crush the bigger companies using this platform. Imagine sending them to three of your products, all with four and five star reviews. Think about how compelling of a landing page that would be for your ad. That would just be, you know, awesome. So hopefully you can see the power of the headline plus or headline search ads and why they're different than bid plus ads. All right, so those are the three types of ads, and I want to talk a little bit now about brand pages again, and what I call your own Amazon website. So first, a brand page again is your custom URL. Um, I, I call it your customer URL. I meant to say custom URL. So sometimes a little too customer focused. I even type that wrong in here. But it's your own web page right on Amazon. And they can contain all these things. You can have a custom graphic banner at the top. So you design it. You put it up there. It's your own banner that you can have look whatever you want. You can also have a product or brand video. So you can send customers to your brand page and have a video play for them that talks about your product or talk about your company. You can also feature a product. So at the very top of your brand page, you can have your main product you're trying to push that day, that month, that season with an add to cart button. And then you have your own place at the bottom for your own company message. You can talk about your company and really sell your service and why you are the best company out there. Nowhere else on Amazon can you have this. You can't have it on your own storefront. You can't have it on your own product detail page. Nowhere else can you have this. On a brand page, you can. And let me tell you this, you know, how much does it cost to build a brand page? Absolutely zero. Nothing. No money at all. Once you get access to AMS, you go out there, you create your own brand page, they review it, it goes live. It costs you nothing. If, if, if that's not the best price you can have, I don't know what is. Uh, so now, other than having this really, really cool brand page, you know, the way it looks and the way it converts, why else do you want to use it? And here's why. First, they look great. They really do. Second, you can update them. You know, once you go out there and create it, you're not stuck. It doesn't have to be out there for, you know, a, a month or a week. You can update this as often as you like. It usually takes within like an hour or two. They've reviewed things, and then they've approved it. You have to go through the approval process, but you can update it as many times as you want. And then they also make your brand look a lot more credible. When you're sending customers, if you're a young company, it doesn't matter whether you have, you know, two, three, four products or 100 products. If you send them to a brand page, it makes you look like you are a big, a big brand. And then lastly, they offer you these two key pieces of data that I've never seen. Conversion data, even from outside traffic, and customer demographics. You learn things about your customers that you will not learn from any other system. 
So, you know, what do you have to have to have a brand page? You must have at least three products. So this is one of the things you need to think through and, and figure out like, hey, I only have one product. How do I turn that into three products? Well, there are ways around that. Um, but you do have to have three products you can list on a brand page. Other than that, you need to have a company logo and a banner. Again, these actually aren't required, but if you want to have a brand page and make it look good, all you need to do is put whatever your company logo is on there and create some type of a banner at the top. That's all that you need to get a brand page going. Um, I know a lot of you guys have questions about brand pages, so I thought it might be best, let's show you some. And the reason I'm listing these three out here is because you probably can't find brand pages. I don't know the exact reason why, but Amazon does not make it easy to, to find a brand page. Uh, it's very difficult to do. Um, I actually had to go out there and scour the internet for a couple days trying to find these out there. Um, so I wanted to give you these at your leisure, or you know, right now you'll see them, but feel free to go and check these out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So first, here's a brand page for a company called Camillus. They make some great survival products. And just look at how beautiful this picture is. At the top, they have Les Stroud, one of the founders of the company. He has his own line of, of titanium knives that he sells. They're highlighting at the top all their products. You can add them to the cart right here. It's a great looking gra graphic. They even have their Facebook page, a like button at the top. Where else can you have your Facebook page, you know, like button on Amazon? Here on a brand page, you can. The next example is Gillette. Again, another big company out there that's selling all their products using these brand pages. And the reason I want to point this one out, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you look at that top banner and right over their Gillette Fusion Pro Glide sensitive bottle to the right, there's a, a play button. And that's because that's a video. If you go to this page right now and hit the video, you'll get to watch a Gillette video. And that could be your video on your brand page. You have the ability to put your own videos up there. Very, very powerful. And then the last one I want to show you was a company called York Nordic. They make outdoor, mostly skiing equipment. And the difference here is instead of a video at the top, they have an add to cart button. So they're highlighting that product. So imagine you sell products different times during the season. Um, if you have a spring product, you focus on that product. Put it at the very top of your brand page. It's the first thing people see, and they can go out there and buy right from there. Like, they have lots of options on these brand pages, and they're just a very, very professional, highly converting, high information gathering landing page that anyone can use completely for free on Amazon. Kind of blew my mind when I found this out. So now again, the biggest benefits of using a brand page are customer conversion and demographic data. Again, they, they give you so much information about your customers that you cannot get anywhere else. Um, and here's how they do it. So for any time you send customer to a brand page, whether this comes internally or externally, like if you're using outside traffic like Facebook, Amazon will track them for 14 days, and they're going to see if they've made a purchase and what they purchased. So then, um, in addition to like just kind of tracking all your traffic to the brand pages, it's better than that. You can actually create what are called specific brand page URLs. So you'll have an actual address for your brand page, and at the end of it, you'll put a little tag onto the end of it, and you'll, you're able to specify which traffic source people are coming from so that you can specifically track which traffic sources are converting for you. So in my example, let's say I'm running ads this week from Facebook and I'm running ads from Google. I can give each one of those a specific URL. They both go to my brand page, looks exactly the same to the customer, but Amazon is going to track which one of those traffic sources converted for me. It's great, so I can really control my spend. I can tweak my demographics. I can tweak my ad copy. I can customize my message and track the performance of that. Never before using sending a customer to Amazon have you been able to do that. So it's really, really awesome to be able to do this. Um, and then also, in addition to conversion data, they're going to tell you demographic data about that customer as well. Um, and I'm going to get into what exactly that is a little later on. So let's talk about conversion data. This is a real live screenshot of one of our brands from January. So I took this basically or actually the month of February. They always give you information in three different quadrants. So the very top one is just how many people visited your brand page. And I actually was specifying that I wanted to see people who visited our brand page only coming from specific Google ads that we ran. That's why at the very top you see that little toggle button uh, that I labeled the Jan product launch Google because I want to see how this traffic source is doing. So I can see how many people during that time period visited our brand page. And then if you go down to the lower left hand quadrant, you can see how many people visit that page and actually took action and clicked through to check out one of your products. So they call this a detail page view. So they got to your brand page, 
how many people then actually were interested enough to take a look at one of your products. That's what you're seeing in the lower left-hand quadrant. Then in the right-hand side, this is what everyone wants to know, how many people then actually bought a product. So this takes you all the way from visitors to people that actually visited one of your product detail pages to people that actually bought a product. You can get a true return on your investment when you send traffic to your brand page from an external traffic source. An incredibly valuable piece of information. Again, brand page, free to build, free to use. So let's talk a little bit more about um, other things you're going to get out of this, about such as demographics. And again, when Amazon gives us information, they like telling us in these three different categories how many people visited your brand page, how many people went down the next step to visit a product detail page, and then how many people actually bought it. And so I'm showing it all that right here, but I want to show you why this is important and the kind of the story that it told us. I'm going to break these down in, into the more detailed categories. So first, during this time period, this is how many people visit our page and the breakout by gender at the top. So as you can see, during that promotion, we got, primarily got you know male customers interested in our, pro in our products, probably around 75%. The other 25% were female. And then it also broke them out into age groups for us. And I was a little surprised. We tend to skew towards the older age groups, but that's great. That's how many people are visiting our site. Good information. Next, I wanted to see how many people took action and actually looked at one of our products. And this was you know another eye-opener. Our gender didn't change very much at all. When I looked at the age ranges of people that were actually taking action and looking into our products, look what exploded. The 45 to 54 year olds are incredibly interested in our products. So when I saw this, I kept thinking, oh my God, you know what? Time to you know pause the ads, change my demographic targeting. Let's only target those people that are 45 to 54 years old. However, luckily, I like data and I decided to take the last step and look at actually how many people converted. And look what happened here. Huge swing. The group that got the most traffic at the bottom, those 45 and 54 year olds, did not convert the most. I'm going to go back one more time and show you that previous slide. Look, they had a huge amount. They were over half of our visitors who actually went down to our detail page were 45 to 54 year olds. But when it came time to buy, to spend their money, less than 20% were that age group we converted with the older age group well above any other age group. And in addition, look at the age groups between 18 and 24 and 25 and 34. Didn't sell a single unit. So let me ask you this. If you saw this data after running your ads for a month and you're spending money on Facebook or something else, are you going to target anyone who's not buying any of your products? Heck no. We didn't. We cut that off for this. And so imagine being able to turn on and turn off those traffic sources that are not working for you. This will give you the ability to do that. Um, so I hope you can see the power in that. It's just It blew my mind being able to get this kind of information out of brand pages and right on side of Amazon. So the last thing you'll get, and I, I say this for last, this is not the best one. This is more of a, an interesting thing that kind of gave us some more insight into our customer base. In addition to the regular demographics, Amazon's going to tell you other categories that your customers are interested in. So again, they're breaking down to three groups. The left-hand side are those people who visit your brand page. The middle quadrant are those who actually went and you know, visited one of your products on your brand page. And the last quadrant are those, not quadrant, I'm sorry, there, there are three pieces here. You need my math right. The actual people that bought. So what this tells us is that everyone who's buying our products, they're also interested in electronics. They're also interested in tools and home improvement, health and personal care, beauty, and grocery. And the reason I bring this up is because if I'm looking to grow my company and grow my brand, and I want to know other products that my customers are interested in, right here, this is going to tell you already, hey, instead of going out and acquiring new customers, if I come up with products that are in these categories that my customers are already interested in, because I guarantee you, Amazon knows what other products your customers buy, you can come up and use that information to develop new products. Now, it doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to start selling something, health and personal care, or our tools and home improvement, but at least I have the knowledge to know my existing customers already want these types of products. Just another you know, mind-blowing, mind-opening experience seeing all this data available to us. So the big question, I mean, everyone wants to know is, you know, okay, Mike, this is awesome. Who can get access to AMS? How much money do I got to spend on AMS? You don't. It's free. Um, uh, all you have to do before, you had to be a vendor to get access to Amazon Marketing Services. However, last year, they opened up a new program called Vendor Express. And that means that anyone, any seller on Amazon, 
can create and use their own AMS account. I'm certain if you were selling last year on Amazon, you probably saw some messages, some emails from Amazon launching their Vendor Express program. That's the program now that what, what they didn't tell you is that if you sign up for Vendor Express, you can get access to AMS. I don't know why they're not really promoting that. If I were them, I would be you know, tooting that horn loudly because that is the biggest plus of launching a product inside of Vendor Express. All right, and so now there is a catch. And now I call it a catch, but I don't think of it as a catch. I think of it as a ticket. You have to be willing to do something in order to get access to uh, AMS. And that is you have to be willing to let Amazon list one of your products. You have to let them test out selling it for you. Um, right now, I know that a lot of people on here may only have one product, and you may not think that is a viable option for you. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but in order to get access to Amazon marketing services, you do need to be able to give Amazon a chance with one product. It doesn't matter what that product is. It can be the lowest selling product you have. If you have three products and one sells one a day and you're, you're not really worried about it, you're almost ready to give up on it, don't give up on it. Give it to Vendor Express. That's going to get you into Amazon marketing services. So I consider this, you know, your ticket into this vastly empty arena that's filled with buyer traffic. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that one product later on too. So here are the basic steps then to actually get access to AMS at a very high level. First, you have to set up a Vendor Express account. And when you do that, you need to use your brand name as your company name. There's a very specific reason for doing that, but let me just say that I want you to keep that in mind, that I don't want you to go out there and make any mistakes right now. When you set up your Vendor Express account, use your brand name as your company name. It'll make things easier for you down the road, and you can change it later on. Second, you do have to list one product inside of Vendor Express and accept one purchase order. So what will happen is you list a product. They will accept that product to actually issue a purchase order for a few samples because they want to test out selling your product. You have to accept that. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you accept that purchase order for a handful of your products, you get a link to activate your AMS account. And then you're live. You can start marketing all your products, not just the one you put into Vendor Express. Any product you're selling on site of Amazon Marketing Services. So those are the high level you know, steps. So what do you need then? Well, there's a few basic things. You do have to have a mailing address. I think I saw someone ask if this works in the United Kingdom earlier. It does. So you have to have a mailing address or a post office box in the market you're selling in. So if you're selling in the U.S., you've got to have a mailing address there. U.K., mailing address there. Germany, a mailing address there. If you're selling in one of those marketplaces and get a mailing address, you're good. Um, they haven't rolled this out into the other marketplaces yet, but, heck, that's, you know, 75%, 80% of all of Amazon right there we're looking at. Next, you do have to have a bank account, and the reason for this is because, you know, you are going to be letting Amazon sell one of your products. They want to pay you for that product. They're not going to steal it from you. You know, when they make a sale, they're actually going to deposit money into your account, just like you're a regular vendor, so you have to give them a bank account. And then, again, you have to be willing to let them sell one, to test out selling one product for you. Um, and it's important because you're not making a commitment for the rest of your life to turn this over to Amazon. Um, at some point in the future, if you choose to, you can pull that product back. But this is just to get access to Amazon marketing services. All right, so the biggest question. I know everyone out there is wondering, you know, okay, um, you got our attention. Sounds amazing. It is. You know, it's pretty much free. It is. You know, you don't have to pay to get access to AMS. But if we're going to do this, what product do we let Amazon sell? And I wanted to cover this, you know, in detail here because I don't want anyone to make a mistake. I want you guys to know that this is a very important step. Very, very achievable. Every single person on this call can do this, can do it the right way, but I want to cover this. So first, do not do this. Don't, if you're selling one product and it's your top selling product and you're making your living or you're growing your business, don't take your one product and turn it over to Vendor Express. Just don't do it. I don't want anyone to get on this call and start doing that right now. That's not the right way to do it. The best option is if you're selling a couple products, let them take one of your least successful ones. Let them try that out for you. That is the best option here. You might be surprised. I mean, I, I want to tell you this too. Your margins will be lower because Amazon becomes like the wholesaler for your product. You're, you're wholesaling at Amazon, and they're going to sell it. They need to get a margin, so your margin will be lower. But if done correctly, you're going to have access to Amazon marketing services and have this huge arena of traffic to sell all your products on. So now, after this trial order is complete, when, uh, you know, when Amazon, you list your product, they send you an order for a few samples, um, then they start selling your product, you can make a decision later on. Do you want to continue to let them have that product? Um, for me, you know what, if it's a product that I'm not really caring about too much right now, it's not really doing much, I'm going to let Amazon run with it. 
yeah, I consider it you know, my fair share to, to let them sell that product for me. And you might be surprised. They have some marketing tools available to them that they might be able to do well. However, if you do turn that product over to them, you know, and you let them sell a few and you decide that it's not really worth it and you're already at, you have access to Amazon marketing services, you can pull that product back. You can actually cancel any future purchase orders and no longer sell that product to them and continue selling it via FBA just so you are, like you are today. So I don't want you to think that if you make this step, you're stuck, you're forever selling that product through Amazon. That is not the case. You can choose at any point in time in the future to pull that product back. So don't worry about that. Now, if you only have one product, and again, I know a lot of people in this situation, can you take advantage of AMS right now? The answer is yes, but there is a however. You have to have a more thought out and creative approach, and that's the way to, to, to think about this. Um, absolutely, positively, if you currently have one product, there are ways to still get an AMS. I'm going to talk more about that later, um, not in this webinar. That's a more in-depth conversation, um, and I want to make sure that when I do that, I do it the right way. I don't want anyone to make any mistakes. I don't want you to be nervous. I want you to fully understand what you're doing on to doing in there, but I want you to know this. You're not stuck. You're not out of the game. You're not missing out. Holding off a few more days to figure that out isn't going to make or break you, but know that you can get into it with one product. We've already come up with some solutions for that for those people. Um, Amazon's always making changes. Um, you know, used to be before, this didn't used to be a requirement. They didn't used to make you have a new product before you got access to AMS. They made this change literally within the last month. But you know what? We've already figured it out. We've already come up with solutions to that. So don't worry about that. You will be able to get access to it. Uh, but again, don't just go out there and list your product in Vendor Express without having a plan right now. I know I'm getting you all excited about this. I want you to be excited about it, but I want you to think through this because this is an incredibly powerful marketing platform. I want you to use it correctly, and I don't want you to make any rash decisions, but just know you can do this. All right, so there's another important mindset here because I'm talking about two different services. I'm talking about Vendor Express, and I'm talking about Amazon Marketing Services. And what I'm primarily going over here is Amazon Marketing Services, this incredible source of traffic. But I don't want to glaze over Vendor Express because that's our ticket to get into Amazon Marketing Services. And launching one product inside of Vendor Express is really your key to getting in, into it. So think about it this way. The entire purpose of getting your Vendor Express account and letting them sell your product, it is to get access to Amazon Marketing Services. It's not to go out there and really start driving sales and say, hey, you know what? I joined Vendor Express. My product is now shipped and sold by Amazon. I'm going to double or triple my sales and make lots of money. That may happen, but don't plan on that. That's not why we're doing this. We're doing this to get access to AMS, and I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, there also is a slight hassle. When you go out there and you list your product on Vendor Express, you won't have as easy access to make some changes on your product. So if you're someone who's always going out there and changing your title and your images and your bullet points, your description, you can't do that inside of Sell Essential because Vendor Express for a time takes over that listing. Now, however, you can still make changes. I don't want you to feel like you're stuck. Your listing is that way for the rest of eternity. That's not the case. You just need to, to go through Vendor Express and submit a change to them. Say, hey, you know what? I have new images. They're more compelling. Can you upload these? I just want you to be aware of that. I always want everyone to know everything going into this. You still can make changes, just not as easily on that one single product. Again, not all your products, just the one single product that you're willing to turn over to them. And then lastly, let's imagine that you do turn this product over and it starts going pretty well. And what if you decide to you know, go the full Vendor Express route and list some more products with them? Or maybe you actually get an invite to become a real vendor. Well, if you decide that later on, you'll actually get access to something called an A-plus detail page. We've all seen them. We've all seen these products that are shipped and sold by Amazon, and their pages look beautiful. They have images in the product detail description. They have videos. They have charts. They have graphs. That's one of the benefits um, of being a member of Vendor Express and the Vendor Program. You'll have the ability to create those later on should you decide to go out there and do that for your product. Again, I'm not focusing on that here, but again, I always want to completely open and know that should you go that route, you have access to some pretty cool things down in the future also. Okay, so let's get started. Um, now, I'm going to go pretty fast here. I know that time is kind of running short here. So you don't have to follow along. You can. Again, I want you to be prepared for this when you do this. The webinar will be uh, a replace. You can follow these on slow, you know, slowly later on. But here's exactly how you get going on Vendor Express. You need the following information. You have to have your mailing address or post office box. Again, in the market you're selling in, U.S., U.K., Germany. Had to have a bank account. However, if you want to go ahead and set up your Vendor Express account now, 
you can always add your bank account later. You just can't get a purchase order or a product listed until you have the bank account. And then the last thing, you do need that product also that you'll be um, willing to put into Vendor Express, but you don't have to do that right now. You can create your account right now and add the bank account and the product later if you want to. There's nothing stopping you and nothing will happen if you do that. You just get you'll be, you know, part of the way there. So here's the link for Vendor Express, simply vendorexpress.amazon.com. And here's the actual screenshot for you. You can take a look at it right there. Sorry, I was on mute there for a second. Um, okay, so here's the Vendor Express page here. Um, I want to let you know that uh, this is the page to go ahead and sign up for it. Be sure to read the page that's out there. Um, it'll tell you some of the details about the Vendor Express program. It is not going to tell you everything we learned here today. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's not even going to tell you everything about Amazon Marketing Services, which is kind of funny. Um, but read, read the program out there, and when you're ready, you just hit the Sign Up button to get going. On this page, then, you're going to get a little simple thing where you can go in and create your name, email address, password. Um, here's what I recommend. When you're creating a Vendor Express account, Use a brand name account. So if you are, you know, uh, Ninja Spatulas and you have the domain ninjaspatulas.com, create an email using that domain because later on down the road, uh, when you're trying to grow your product and grow your brand and you're building a brand page, it makes you look more credible, even to Amazon, that you own that domain and that's your brand name. So that's what I would do. I would use a brand name email. Usually, take a few minutes to set up. Maybe you already have one. Um, so that's what I would use for signing up Fender Express. When you do that, you put the information, you're going to ask two questions. Um, can you ship the products from a U.S. address? And again, I'm doing this from a U.S. account, that's why it's asking that. And also, do you have a U.S. bank account? You want to answer yes to both those questions. Even if you're not going to list a product yet, even if you're not going to enter your bank account, still answer yes because they need to know that you're going to have those in the future. When you do that, it's going to open up the next screen for entering your other information. And again, I highlighted this. I don't think I could have made a arrow any bigger than that, but under your company name, you want to use your brand name. Uh, and the reason is because when they later on set up your Amos account for you, they're going to take that company name and convert it into your brand name. So if you'll go ahead and you have it as your brand name right now, it's going to make the next step of the process much easier. Just trust me, that's what to do. We can always come back later and change this later on, uh, but for the initial steps, use your brand name. Uh, there's an example of me doing it there. Once you enter those, you're going to get the program summary. It's going to tell you the benefits of Vendor Express. Again, they don't tell you about AMS. Not, court, not quite sure why, um, but uh, uh, these are some of the benefits of it. Uh, you want to agree this and accept and continue. And then they're immediately going to take you in and ask you to enter your banking information. Now, if you're ready, um, if you're down the path and you are going to list a product with Vendor Express, go ahead and enter this information right now. If not, just select the I'll provide my banking information later. It's at the very top. You can do that and always and do that later on. And then once you do that, you're in. You have your Vendor Express account. And you'll notice the very next thing they want you to do is to start adding your products. Um, you'll see that right in the middle it says add more products. Right now this account didn't have any products in it. <clears throat> um, so that'll be the next step, actually adding your product. And I'm going to go over this real quickly here too. So then once you're ready, you'll add your product and wait for it to get approved. Usually it takes about a day or so, sometimes less. I've seen it happen in just a matter of hours. Uh, keep in mind that some categories are restricted. Uh, health and personal care, I haven't seen a lot of people get accepted into. Um, so that if you run into that situation, you may need to create another product that's not in that category. Um, I know that sounds kind of daunting, but anyone who's created a product, you know that you can do that. But I want to begin, just to let you know, some of the categories might have some restrictions right now. The only one I know of is health and personal care. Everything else is wide open, um, but they will have to approve the product. Once they do that, they will generate a purchase order for you. It'll usually be for a handful of your products. They want you to send them in and so they can start testing out to sell them. Um, and then what they're going to do is they're going to give you a purchase order. You open that up. You accept it. You just say, yes, I'm going to send in five of my products. And then they're going to generate a UPS label for you and all the instructions. It's all very clear. You get three sheets. First sheet are your instructions on what to do. The second sheet is a packing list. You put it right inside your box. The third sheet is actually your UPS label. You don't pay for it. Amazon's paying for it. You just tape that on the outside of your box that contains your products. You ship it off to Amazon, and you're done. And here's the really cool thing. As soon as you get to that step, once you list your product with Amazon, and once you actually go ahead and um, accept that purchase order, 
you'll have access to AMS. That's how simple it can be. Now, some important notes then. Okay, so some of us have all of our products at FBA. I know a lot of people have your products at FBA. I want you to be aware that you can't just join Vendor Express and then say, hey, I'm going to ship my products straight from FBA warehouse to Vendor Express. That doesn't work. Amazon looks at you as a real vendor, a real company. They expect you to have a certain number of your products at, at your own warehouse or office, whatever. But don't worry, it's easy to do. What you want to do is then pull some products out of FBA to have them shipped to your house, and then you want to go ahead and put a UPC code on them if you already have it, and then ship those back to the vendor warehouse. Again, cover your FNSKU label. Again, these are really important tips here because um, you're going to be a vendor now. You need to have a UPC code, not just the FNSKU. That FNSKU is specific to you as an Amazon FBA seller. It's not tied directly to UPC. So you want to cover your products FNSKU with a UPC, put it into the package, and then send that off to Amazon. Um, again, they're going to give you all the instructions very, very clearly. The only thing they don't tell you about the, is about that UPC code. That's why I wanted to tell you about it. Um, but they'll tell you exactly what to do and how to send that product out to Vendor Express and have your product for sale by Amazon. So then, this is the, uh, the big part of it. Once you're done, and once you've shipped that out, you're going to see a tab. It's actually already there. You'll, you have a tab inside of your Vendor Express account that says Marketing. It's on the very far right-hand side of your uh, Vendor Express account. When you click on that, it's going to show you the screen. Advertise at Amazon. They're not telling you this. This is your invitation into Amazon Marketing Services. Um, all you do is click that Accept and Continue button, and your account is automatically created for you on AMS. You're done. Um, if you do not see that Accept and Continue button, or if it's grayed out, that means you haven't listed and accepted a product yet. Um, that's your key to say, hey, you need to go back. You haven't entered your product. You haven't accepted it. You haven't shipped it off to them yet. Once you do, that button becomes active, and you are open and available and ready to get to Amazon Marketing Services and start setting up right there and then your brand page. Start setting up product display ads, sponsored search ads, headline search ads. Um, it's all open to you just by listing one product. doesn't matter how little it's selling. Letting Amazon have a shot at it, you get access to the system. That's all there is to it. So congratulations, you're in. When you log in, this is what you'll see. There's your three types of ads at the top. You'll see the sponsor search, headline search, product display. You'll also see the pages menu at the top. That's what gives you access to your brand pages to create one. Um, that's it. That's just, you know, I, I know it sounds a little, a little daunting to get the one product out there, but it's not. Once you get over that minor, minor hurdle, you're in. And I want to say something else too. And I was talking to Matt about this in Maui. Um, you know, when Amazon always making changes and and putting in this requirement to have a product. At first, some people were thinking, well, you know what? That's a really big hurdle to get over. You know, I don't want to list my product and get you know inside of Vendor Express. But once we thought through it as a team, we thought, like, you know what? Is it really that big of a deal? Take one of our products that's not selling well or create a new product that we don't really care about. No, that's not a big deal at all because once you do that, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to give you access to this huge source of traffic for free. Again, it's for free. You have to pay for the ads, but there's no price to get into Amazon Marketing Services. And two, it's going to create a hurdle for other people to stay out of this. Everyone on this webinar today knows exactly what you have to do to get access to Amazon Marketing Services. And you know, you're hearing it from me and other people have done it, that it is not a big hurdle to get over if you just get over that to list that product. Other people will give up. They will not go that extra route. They'll think it's too difficult. They'll be too afraid. They won't do it. That's a good thing for everyone on here because that's going to keep other people out of the system. It's going to keep you having access to this amazing system of advertising that some of the people are just not going to know how to get into or once they know how to get into it, they're going to be afraid to do it. You won't be. You have all the information. You are armed with that knowledge and this incredible advertising system. So I hope that makes sense to you. hope it resonates to you. hope you realize I I haven't sold you anything. I'm not doing that. I'm giving you information here about what's worked for us, what's working for a handful of other people that are using this. And I say a handful because so few people are using this system. Um, it's just, it's incredible. And I'm so happy, so thankful, and so blessed to have Matt, you know, have me here and share this with you today. And so, Matt, if you want to, I thought maybe we can go through some questions and I can uh, try to field whatever I can. Um, awesome. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, sure can. Cool, yeah, my little muting thing wasn't working. Um, so cool, so yeah, so yeah, thanks Mike, that was awesome. So yeah, as everyone knows, this is, uh, or should know, this is kind of uh, part one of two of the webinar. So we're at an hour into it and we're kind of just getting started. You know, Mike sort of went through the entire um, reason why this uh, platform is so valuable if you sell on Amazon <clears throat> or if you're about to start selling on Amazon. Uh, so it's, it's just absolutely amazing what you're able to do with this. It's just like I know when we started talking, I guess, months ago um, and, and Mike was talking about this, I was like, oh, my gosh, like we actually we absolutely have to um, bring this to people. And he was more than willing, which, you know, he has no obligation. He's got his own business to run and everything. Uh, but, you know, he loves to help people. So uh, here we are. So this is an amazing opportunity for people. And so what we're doing is what you can see on your screen right now is there's a two part webinar. So this is part one, which if you got on late, we are posting a replay. Um, I've already posted the replay link in the chat. Go to webinars thing is acting a little funny. So I may not be able to post another link to that. But worst case, definitely check out if you don't have the link to the replay, watch your email or <clears throat> easiest way is I'll probably post it on the amazing.com Facebook page which um, you can just look in, in Facebook for amazing.com or just search Google amazing.com Facebook or the URL is just facebook.com slash amazing, A-M-A-Z-I-N-G, com, C-O-M. No, no punctuation in between there, facebook.com slash amazing com. So as soon as this is over, I'll make sure the replay link is in there. But go ahead and do this um, now or right after this webinar is register for part two of the webinar. So if you just go to, which I'm going to double check this redirect link to make sure it works fine, amazing.com slash secrets. We just did that because go-to webinars links are crazy. Yep, looks like it uh, goes to the webinar registration page fine. So this is uh, part two of the webinar. So go ahead and either write that URL down to do after this, or you can do it right now. And all you do is go over there and enter your first name, last name, and email. It's It doesn't take very long to fill that out. But that's part two of this webinar series. So uh, it's amazing.com slash secrets. We are also going to be posting a replay of that on the same replay page where this webinar will be. So there's a little extra button over there that says spy and profit. That's part two. Um, so the replay will be there. So replay for both of these will be there. So don't worry, uh, but definitely try to make it live because of what we're going to do right now, which is get into some live Q and A. If I can get go to webinars thing to do some scrolling. Okay, here we go. Just give me a few seconds here. So Mike, if you wouldn't mind, um, Let's let them know, like, what is the main content? Because, I mean, we've told them that it's, you know, learning how to spy on your competitors. But maybe give them a little clarification while I'm trying to get, go to whoever yeah, sure. scroll. So, so um, two things. One, um, it, it's just an incredibly cool feature of AMS that, again, too much to put into here. But I'm going to show you a way to use AMS to spy on your competitors selling products and see exactly what keywords they're converting for. Yeah, I, I had no idea this was going to work. I tested this out a few months ago. It blew my mind, and I'm going to open up and share you guys for that. It's going to give you some great insight onto your competitors, what's working for them, and how to take that and make it work for you. Right. So the way I, I look at it, Matt, is um, let your competitors build an incredible marketing com campaign and then go out and see the results of it and copy that campaign and what's working. It's just it's mind-blowing when you see that. Um, that's one thing I want to share. And then secondly, I also want to share, I know a lot of people, and I fully anticipated this, you're going to have questions about, hey, if I only have one product, you know, that's great for everyone else on here who can get into it and list another product. What do I do? Am I left out? My answer to you is no, you're not left out. I want to cover a couple different options that you have. Um, I don't have time to do that right now. It's not that we're holding back anything, but that's a more in-depth conversation. So I'm going to lay out those options for you on what you can do to still get access to AMS and list an additional product, how to do that, how to do it the right way to make sure you stay in Amazon's good graces, and how to make sure that it works out for you. So those are the two main topics that I'm going to cover in the next webinar in just a few days. Cool. Thanks, Mike. So yeah, we got a, another computer over here to be able to pull up the uh, Q&A, but I've got the Q&A. We've got, uh, as kind of expected, you know, hundreds of questions. So let's see here. Um, um, this is a question you may or may not know the answer to is like to sign up for uh, AMS. Do you have to uh, like have a US bank account or any of that sort of stuff? So uh, that's a good question. So you have to have a US bank account to sign up for Vendor Express. And it, and, and that's if you're selling in the U.S. Now, if you're selling in the U.K., you have to have a U.K. bank account. If you're selling in Germany, you have to have a Germany bank account. So whichever market you're in, you do have to have a bank account. 
um, that they can actually deposit funds into. So yes, that is that is true. I'm sure we can find the answer out to this, but I wonder if um, you know Payoneer and World First and all that work for those. I don't I'm know almost know, but... positive they do, Matt. But yeah, it's a good thing to check. Okay, cool. So yeah, if everyone's using that, it probably should be fine. Um, yeah, and like any bank account will work. It doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, so that'll be fine. So let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, so here's a good one. So Nancy says, uh, uh, Mike, you mentioned it's difficult to find brand pages. How do we do that? Uh, does a customer <laughs> does a customer get the brand page when they click on your product? Like, how do they even find out the brand pages even exist? Yeah, you're right. They won't. And and I know that sounds so inconceivable that you can't even do a search for brand pages. I had to go out there and do Google searches um, because brand pages are so little known, so little used. I had to go out there and literally, here's how I found Gillette's brand page. I typed in Amazon.com slash Gillette to see if they had a brand page. That's how brand pages are. I must have tried 50 different big brands out there. I only found a handful just by typing in because you can't search for them. So now, so to, for us to find them and see examples, very difficult to do, which is exactly why I gave you three great examples. Now, for your customers, you don't have to worry about that because when you're the owner of a brand page and you create that brand page, you will have that URL, and then you start using that URL on your own website, on your Google ads, on your Facebook ads, on Pinterest ads. You know that URL, and you put it in there so that anyone who clicks on your ad goes straight to your brand page. It doesn't matter if they can't find and search it. You're sending people to that. If you think about it, that's a good thing because you want to track that traffic so you can see exactly who's going there, who's converting, and what those demographics are. Cool. So um, Steve asks, can I sell the same product through FBA and Vendor Express at the same time? Awesome question. The answer is yes, you absolutely can. Now, there's some caveats around there. Um, I get this question a lot from other people starting the vendor program. I also do a lot of um, mentoring for people who get invited to the vendor program. You absolutely can sell your product through FBA. However, what, uh, what Amazon's going to do is they're going to try to match your price. So if you sell it and Amazon's selling it, Amazon's most likely going to get the buy box, and that's okay, you know, because that, you're letting them sell this product. But they'll match your product. You do not have to turn off your listing in FBA. You can keep it live. As a matter of fact, um, it's one of my little tricks for controlling prices. Keep your FBA listing live. Set it at a very reasonable price, and that way you know Amazon's going to match a good price for you. <laughs> it's a good trick. Cool. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Jason asks, uh, will I still make money on the sales through Vendor Express? Uh, the answer is you will get paid for them, yes, but you have to negotiate your price with Amazon. So um, if you do your pricing model correctly, you will. I've never yet seen anyone who doesn't make money on Vendor Express. It'll just be a lower margin. So if you think about it, if your product sells for $30 right now on Amazon and you make a $10 profit on that, well, you're going to sell this to Amazon and then they're going to sell it. So if they're selling for $30, they have to make a profit too. So some part of that $10 profit will go to Amazon some part will go to you. So you just need to make sure that when you agree to a price with them that it's something you still make a little bit. My personal opinion is as long as you're breaking even, who cares? You know, as long as this is just a new product just to get access to Amazon marketing services, as long as you're not losing money, do it. That You, you, you gain so much more by getting access to this marketing platform. Awesome. So um, Vicky asks, can you ship directly from the manufacturer to the uh, Amazon vendor? Um, if your manufacturer will do the packaging for you and use the UPS label that Amazon creates for you, you can do that. Um, just realize that you know it's going to depend where your your manufacturer is at. Amazon is assuming that you are shipping this product from the U.S. That's one of the questions when they ask you in Vendor Express. Can you ship this product from the U.S.? So they're so they're going to give you a UPS label. You have to use the UPS label, and UPS only ships internally from the U.S. So if your manufacturer is in the U.S. The answer is yes, you can do that. Um, if not, very simple solution. Um, have ship some of your products in FBA to either you or to a friend in the U.S. and have them box them up and send it into uh, uh, the vendor program. Cool. So uh, Rami asks, uh, how many units will you be expected to give to Amazon? I've seen as little as two and as many as ten. Awesome. Um, and you don't have to send them all into them. So when you get a purchase order from them, if they ask you for a dozen and you only want to give them six, Give them six. It's okay. Uh, again, now, I, I say that because that's the, the honest truth. You can give them as few as you want. In my own opinion, 
give them what they want. If they ask for 10 of them, give them 10 units. Show good faith. I mean, Amazon is your partner. They're your friend here. They're giving you access to the system. Let them have a few units. Let them try to sell it and see what happens. Um, just be authentic. Cool. So uh, here's a good question. So uh, Zafar says, I'm ungated in the health and personal care category. Will such products be accepted in a vendor express? I have an awesome answer for you. And my answer is I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I would love to like make up an answer for you. Um, what I would suggest is this. I would try it out, <clears throat> enter it in the Vendor Express. If they come back and say we're not accepting products in that category, I would then show them that you are ungated. You know, you'll be able to open a ticket up, say, hey, we are ungated and approved for this category. That might sway them. I mean, they may very be very happy to do that. I don't know that for sure, um, but that's what I would try. It's not going to hurt to try. Nothing will go wrong by trying. Cool. Uh, so uh, this one is for me-ish. So Sermit says, I missed the whole thing. So I guess if you just got onto the webinar, because I know it was full, I, I, I was looking at the replay page and there's Facebook comments on there. So a lot of people uh, were getting rejected because it was full. So uh, uh, just make sure you check out the replay. So we are posting the replay link now. Uh, hopefully this works. Send to all. So... You all should get that, I think, that uh, it's kind of a complicated URL. But once again, we will uh, post that in the Amazing.com Facebook page. Um, so we'll post that over there. So definitely uh, check check that out. Which, by the way, this is not like a plug for our Facebook page, but that's a good way to get communication also. If you ever go like that page, uh, it's a good way to get quicker updates because sometimes emails don't go through. Sometimes you know people unsubscribe. So it's just something to think about anyways. But we'll post a replay link over there. Um, and uh, we just hopefully send it out to everybody. It's just amazing.com slash replays slash secret dash Amazon dash platform, which I'm not going to repeat a whole bunch of times, but um, that's that's the replay link. So if you missed this, we're going to upload the replay um, to YouTube, I believe and then we're going to embed that on the replay page and so it'll be there for your viewing um, within a few hours hopefully so let's see what else we have here still tons of questions which by the way like there's <clears throat> probably not a good likelihood we're going to get through all these questions <laughs> and i can tell also from uh mike and my experience in maui that his voice is chopping out <laughs> so uh <laughs> we'll probably give him a break after a little bit because we need to make sure he's ready to go for tuesday which is the other part of this is make sure you register for the webinar on tuesday it's part two of this this is part one so it's amazing.com slash secrets just register for that webinar just first name last name email just the same as you got on this webinar do that we'll make sure mike is good and rested up for that one so <laughs> let's see um <clears throat> hey uh, man i saw one i'm going to cover if yeah, you don't mind go for it um i forgot the name but someone asked that i mentioned you lose access to make some changes to your product once you listen to vendor express they want to know is it just for that product or all your products you have listed in sell essential it is only for that product um you don't lose access to everything else. It's just that one specific product. And again, it's not a terrible thing. Um, you can make changes. You just have to request them for Vendor Express, but it only is that one product. Cool. Uh, here's a cool one. John Galler says, Matt and Mike, fantastic training. Thanks so much. Oh, awesome. Thanks, John. Let's see. Um, I think you just answered that one. Yeah, lots of questions. I'm trying to pick through ones that I think would be good, but Mike, if you see some, since you uh, you definitely know this stuff, then yeah. uh, you're just as qualified, if not more so, to pick out questions. So I'm just kind of looking here, just to make sure we're not sure. answering stuff. I, I saw someone, I, I see a consistent one here is, can we sell more than one brand in Vendor Express? Mm -hmm. um, the way I would do this is, uh, I would start off with one brand, and in general, a Vendor Express account is tied to an AMS account, and there's one brand. However, once you get one brand launched, you have two options. Uh, you can go into your AMS account and request access to another brand. And as long as you already have a Vendor Express account, a lot of times they'll just approve that in, in your AMS account to that access to the other brand. You'll have to verify to them, you know, tell them that you own the website, the brand, whatever. Um, but you can do that. But start with one, request access to it. If that does not work, then the answer is yes. Simply set up another Vendor Express account using that other brand and create a separate AMS account with that brand. You have both options. I go the first one first. Um, Vendor Express has real life people. You may get an email. You may get a voicemail from them. They're trying to grow this part of the business. Take advantage of those people. Be authentic with them. Let them know that you know, hey, you're a seller. That you are looking to grow your brand. You're not ready to go all all in. You're not going to go out there and list every product you have with them. You want to start out and test out with one. They'll be very open to that. They appreciate your authenticity and honestly, honesty. And the reason I mention that is talk to them and then ask them questions also. Say, hey, you know what? If this works out, I may launch another brand. And they may tell you, okay, you can get another brand access inside this AMS account or we may want you to set another account. Um, so there's two routes to go that way. 
Cool. So I know a question we got uh, asked earlier was, uh, and I know this is kind of changing, but like, how long do you, how long does it take to get set up with this account, like for approval? Um, let's see. Uh, usually about an hour or two. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's very very quick. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, wow. There, I feel like there's like. 20 questions coming in every minute. So let's see. Oh, here's one. Here's the Don says, thanks for the killer training. I got inspired right away and followed along and set up the accounts while you explained them. Super exciting. Awesome. Um, uh, here's an interesting question. So Margaret asks, is this only applicable to private label products? Or if you have your own brand, I guess. Yeah, it, so yeah, great way to put it, Matt. It's applicable if you are a brand owner. You have to own the brand. You can't go out there and just start selling products on another brand unless you have an agreement with that brand in order to be a uh, brand reseller. Um, so you know, as a matter of fact, if you are, if you work with a brand and you're an official represent, representative of that brand, you can request access to vendor uh, to uh, Amazon Marketing Services. There's actually a way to do that. So I don't cover that here because most people don't you know, don't do that, but work with your brand, tell them what you're going to do, and then go to the AMS, sign up, and say, hey, I am an official brand representative, and then they'll start that dialogue verifying that you are an official representative of the brand, but you have to be an official brand representative or own that brand. Cool. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So... Um, I guess this person is basically asking, like, should you use the same kind of <clears throat> email password stuff for Seller Central and for Vendor uh, Express? Awesome question. So what I, if your current email address is already your brand email address, so it's not like a normal Gmail or Outlook or something, um, yes, I would use you, – you, you can use your exact same email address. Um, the reason I always mention the brand one is, again, you're getting involved with a different part of Amazon. They're specifically driven towards brand growth. That's why it's going to be in your benefit to use a brand email address just in case you have any questions later on. You can imagine these people get you know thousands of emails. If they get you know random mike123 at gmail.com versus mike at ninjaspatulas.com, they're going to be much more open to responding to me should I have any questions if I use a brand email. But yes, sorry, I sometimes take a long time. The answer is yes if it's a brand email. Okay. Cool. Um, so, Mike, how are you feeling? How's your voice doing? You want to? Uh, you know, let's go? let's go for about five, ten more minutes if we can. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, here's one. Uh, don't know how to pronounce that first name, but it says, "Does it have to be trademark? Trademark registered?" No, it does not have to be. Um, okay. They don't do a check on that. Um, think of this as brand registry. And the same thing as brand registry rules kind of apply here. You have to be able to verify that you are the brand owner one way or the other. Um, it's But it, again, trademark is not a requirement. So here's a good follow-on question on that, actually. So Teresa asks, what do you have to do to prove that you're the brand owner? Um, well, if you do it the way that I'm telling you. So if you sign up for Vendor Express using your brand name as your company name, you won't have to do anything. When you Once you accept your product, and you enter it, you accept it, the purchase order, your AMS account automatically gets set up and they use your company name as your brand name. And that's why it's so important to do it the right way. So you, you won't have to do anything to verify it. The only times you have to verify things is if you go straight in AMS, you want to add another brand, then you have to verify it. But do it the way we told you here, you shouldn't have to do that. Okay, cool. So uh, here's one that I'll give my take on, um, and I'm sure Mike will probably disagree, but he can add some more information. So will this marketing platform become more and more expensive over time? My opinion is yes. We've seen it happen with every paid advertising platform that at, at, at first, it's super cheap. I remember this was before I did anything marketing-wise online. People used to talk about nickel clicks and that sort of thing in Google AdWords, which is unheard of. Like now it's, you know, two, three dollars for normal keywords, much less like the super competitive ones that are in the tens of dollars. Um, but, uh, you know, it was kind of like that with Amazon sponsored ads too. When we first found out it even existed, uh, you could just turn it on with like no targeting whatsoever. And sometimes you would get traffic. Sometimes you wouldn't get a whole lot, but it was almost guaranteed to be profitable with no targeting at all, uh, just cause it was so cheap. Um, and so that's kind of the situation with, uh, this right now, which is why we're kind of pushing you all to learn how to do it now rather than later. It's like, sure, you can always wait till later, but it's like the people who get in early on these kind of things can kind of 
get some early wins. I mean, especially with a paid advertising platform, it, it's cheaper per click because there's less people on there. When there's more people on there bidding for the same spots, it becomes more expensive. Um, so I don't know if you have any other uh, input on that, Mike. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. And what I foresee happening, Matt, you know, are we going to see a bump, you know, if, you know, if a, a, a several hundred to a thousand people go out there and start using it in the next couple weeks? Absolutely. You'll see a, a, a bump in the prices. But what will happen, which is also happen with sponsored products, is that once people realize that you need to be smart about this in order to get the best benefit, you still need to monitor your ads, watch your metrics, and then the prices will come back down and normalize. Um, anytime people are just throwing money and not thinking about it, it raises the price for a little bit, but it always normalizes because no one's going to continue to lose money on this. So um, we've got kind of a cool, cool related question here. So Robbie asks, can you give any information about the click cost um, for some of these ads? Uh, yeah, it, you know, it really is all over the place. I've seen them as cheap as 10 cents, and I've spent really, the, you know, the most I've spent so far is probably about 60 cents a click. Oh, wow. Which, if you think about it, that's pretty cheap. Now, I'm not in health and personal care. Um, again, that's probably you know not a moot point because you can't get into it yet that I know of. Um, but ten cents to sixty cents is about what I'm seeing. Um, so, but I can tell you this: my A costs, the average cost of sale, if you really you know pay attention and do these the right way, is awesome. I'm getting anywhere from a five percent A costs up to about a twenty-two to twenty-three percent A costs. All those are lower than my profit margins, so I know that I'm making money on every single sale that I make. Um, that's awesome. That's crazy. I didn't really, I didn't even realize it was that inexpensive right now. <clears throat> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, here's a good one that may be a good one to wrap up on. So uh, Marie says, Mike, I currently have one product. Is there anything I can do before the next webinar to help prepare to move forward with AMS? Um, really, the only thing is just come prepared to, with, with an open mind and be sure to be on the call because you're going to hear we talk about. I'm going to lay out exactly what to do. I don't have time. I would give you some tips right now, but it's important that you know how to do it the right way. So uh, just you know, be, be patient. Um, know that we do have a solution for anyone in that situation. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we could keep going in questions, but I definitely uh, want to be um, aware because what happened in Maui, just so you all know, and uh, Mike may or may not like me telling people this, but uh, we had Mike prepped for a full day of training that he volunteered to do that people would absolutely love. It was a small group, very sort of um, elite group of people there. And um, Mike was there to, to talk and he just sort of came down with something and his voice started going away slowly and slowly. We thought he wasn't going to be able to finish. Then he made a miraculous comeback the second half of the day, his voice did. And then the next day he was silent. He could not <laughs> say anything, could not talk. And so I made fun of him the entire time. Uh, and his voice has just started to come back. And so I don't want to like push it because he could probably keep going, but then it'll push it in his voice and he may not be able to do the webinar on Tuesday. So I don't want to take that risk. And so what I recommend you do is we still have so many questions. And so what I think the best route to do <clears throat> is right now, jump over to the replay page. Um, and so you've been given that URL multiple times now. So hopefully you have it by now. But if not, can always go to the um, amazing.com Facebook page and grab it from there. I'll post it there in just a couple minutes. Um, and I'll also post in the ASM Facebook group in case you need it there also. So uh, we'll have the replay link in, in there and also should be in your email. But uh, either way, so uh, check there. And there's Facebook comments on there. So just uh, post your question in those Facebook comments. We'll look them over. I'll see if we can get Mike to look them over. And, and we'll answer the ones that maybe we haven't thought of or the ones that won't be covered in the second webinar. So if they're not covered there, then we're like, we should probably go ahead and answer them. So we'll look at them there. So if you still have a question that you really want to get answered, jump over to the replay page, use those Facebook comments and uh, answer it there. That's probably the best way to do it. So uh, that's really it. Make sure you register for part two of the webinar series, amazing.com slash secrets. Uh, if you missed part of this webinar, the replay will hopefully be posted within a couple hours over on the replay page. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited about the second uh, webinar. I know I know Mike is, and I know you all are. So make sure you jump over there because we are just getting started. So that's really uh, it for me. Check out the replay. Ask any questions you have on those Facebook comments. Register for part two of the webinar, and we will see you on Tuesday. So that's me signing off. And Mike, feel free to say goodbye. Awesome. Thanks so much, Matt. Thanks, everyone, for uh, all the comments. I'm watching them scroll by.
tons of thank yous, tons more great questions. Um, I will be in the Facebook group later on. I actually, believe it or not, I'm going to get a chest x-ray to make sure I'm okay. So I won't be around for the next hour or so, but I'm going to hop into the Facebook group later on today and tonight. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. And if I cannot today, then we'll cover as many as we can on next Tuesday. I'm looking forward to this. I'm glad you all love the content. I loved giving it to you guys, um, and I can't wait to see you all soon. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks, everyone.